Hello, welcome to PC Jack. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new CPU cooler, the Nocto NHP1. Let's check out this chunk of a cooler. So, Nocto have finally launched their highly anticipated passive CPU cooler. The unique feature of this cooler being its ability to passively cool your system using natural convection due to its incredibly thick and dense design meaning it's completely silent under operation. This thing's heavy, I'm gonna have to put it down. So, as you can see, it's an absolute beast of a heatsink, and uh, I've been waiting a long time for this to actually hit the market. So today, I'm finally getting hands-on with this cooler and seeing exactly how well it performs. But before I do, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Noctua for sending out this review sample for me to show you guys. Noctua are hands down the undisputed champions of CPU cooling, and are just continuing on their path of offering a wide range of options for any sort of configuration. So, when it comes to the NHP1 and its unique design, while it's an excellent example of Noctua's innovative engineering capabilities, to better understand how it actually works, let's take a look at the specs and what makes it so special. The NHP1 is designed to cool high-end CPUs with low to moderate thermal outputs without the need for a conventional fan to push air through the heatsink. The heatsink itself has a highly dense aluminium fin array with six copper heat pipes fed through to help dissipate heat. Using Noctua's Secure Firm 2 mounting system, this cooler is compatible with a range of socket types on both AMD and Intel platforms, including AM4 and LGA1200. Now, let's take a look at what comes in the box. When you first open up the box for the NHP1, you'll first find a box of accessories which includes instructions for installed on either Intel or AMD systems, mounting hardware and a backplate for Intel sockets, mounting hardware for AMD sockets, a pack of Noctua NTH2 thermal paste, NACW cleaning wipes, optional fan brackets, and an Noctua badge. Also included is a Noctua branded Torx screwdriver, which you will need to use for the installation. And finally, the NHP1 itself. Also included is an optional NFA12 120mm fan, in case you wish to use the cooler semi-passively. So, what I thought we'd do today is uh, just to test this cooler out and see what kind of performance we can actually expect out of it with its unique design. Now, Nocto have been very forthcoming in setting expectations for how well you should expect this cooler to actually work with your system. They have very clear guidelines in place to actually let you know whether this cooler is actually compatible with your CPU. Their website actually includes a compatibility checker which will tell you the sort of performance you should expect when pairing it with your CPU. So, with the requirement to pair this with a CPU with a low thermal output, I decided to go for the Ryzen 5 3600 as it's listed as being compatible on their website. A CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads and a 65 watt TDP should mean that we shouldn't have too many issues with keeping this CPU under control and uh, still maintain decent performance. Now, not to have also shown that this cooler is capable of cooling even something like the 11900K. While you can do that, you may struggle to hit your turbo speeds that you would expect with that kind of CPU. For today's testing, we'll be using an open air testbed setup. However, Noctua do advise using a case with adequate airflow in order to uh, get the most out of the cooler. So, with all out of the way, let's get this chunky boy installed. So I've got the uh, cooler installed now and uh, we're actually booted into the desktop and uh, basically I've been running the system on idle for a couple of minutes just to try and gauge the sort of temperatures we're getting at idle. So far I'm really quite surprised. We're currently averaging between mid to high 20s to the high-ish 30s. There was a point it did go to about 44 degrees C but uh, it hasn't been sticking around that very much. So so far for idle temperatures I'm already really impressed. So I'm thinking the next thing we're going to have to do, we're going to have to get a game loaded up and uh, see how it handles being under a bit of a load. So I've been uh, playing GTA 5 for about 20-30 minutes now and uh, I've been playing at 1920 by 1080 The reason why I'd run at that resolution is because it's obviously going to be a bit more taxing on the CPU compared to the GPU. So it should push our CPU a little further. The highest we've been hitting so far is 63C. It's still boosting to around 41 41GHz, something like that which is really, really impressive. So if you really wanted to run this in a gaming only system, you definitely could. But yeah, I'm uh, really impressed with this one so far. So in conclusion, what do I reckon on the NHP one? 
Well, considering the performance we were getting during gaming, I'm really impressed with what Noctua has achieved here. After gaming for a couple more minutes, we did see a spike up to 71C, which is still perfectly fine, but uh, for the majority of the time I was playing, I was averaging in the low 60C range, which is uh, really good. But it is worth admitting that during gaming, your CPU isn't going to be quite as much under load as your GPU is. So uh, obviously it wouldn't be a very intense workload for your CPU. Still, impressive nonetheless. During a Cinebench R20 multi-core run, this is where I expected to see the limitations of the NHP one start to uh, show. But Noctua did specify that this cooler is not intended for firmly demanding workloads, such as a synthetic benchmark. But it's uh, not really a real life scenario, but more a worst case. But it did still hold its own after only hitting 79.6C after 10 minutes in the multi-core testing. And while we've played it safe with the 3600 and its 65 watt TDP, I do believe a higher end CPU could still uh, be managed with the NHP1, but you would be sacrificing boost speeds in return for reduced noise levels. So you've got to consider whether you value noise levels more or whether you would rather see the maximum performance from your CPU, which you could achieve with something like the NHD15. Now, coming in at 109 pounds as of the time of filming, it's a pretty big upfront investment for something that's not going to outperform the NHD15, but it's still an interesting direction for Noctua. Personally, I think this would be the perfect cooler for something like a home server where your CPU isn't going to be under such an intense workload, and due to the fact that your server is most likely going to be running 24-7, this would reduce the actual dust intake in the system due to the fact there's no fan whatsoever. After my test though, I've got to say I'm well and truly impressed by what Noctua have achieved with this and I can't wait to see what they do next. So, that's it for today's video. What are your thoughts on the Noctua NHP1? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. I will also be uploading an installation tutorial for how to install the NHP1 if you are intending on buying one for yourself. So make sure you don't miss out on that when it goes live. Thanks again to Noctua for providing today's test sample, and most importantly, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.